Hi Chai Dodu and welcome to Tell Me. Love or hate fashion, most of us love watching a catwalk or looking through magazines to see what celebrities are wearing or just gazing at what the next season's fashion style is. Now my grandmother and mother used to look through magazines, cut them out and make their own clothes. Neither it was cheap back day, those days or it was a usual shopping day spree. Although innovation is mostly a good thing, it doesn't always prove to be right. Now 1960s turned the fashion industry upside down down and embrace the demand of young people for cheaply made clothing which turned into a fast fashion industry. Now this brought major problems with it such as unjust labour practices or catastrophic amount of waste and now it's time to turn that clock upside down again and move to slow fashion but how do you move from fast fashion to slow fashion? That is what we're talking about today on Tell Me sustainable fashion to understand why we need to be conscious consumers and how the fashion industry is actually impacting the environment and what does sustainable fashion really mean. So joining me on the program today, writer, personal stylist and activist and her work focuses on sustainability, ethics and also um, fashion and Asia Barber and also Safia Mini, founder of People Tree Company, world leading social entrepreneur, pioneer of sustainable and fair trade clothing. Thank you very much both of you for joining us on Tell Me today. It's a pleasure to have you here. And Safia, just before we dive into the conversation, what are you wearing today and why? Oh, thank you. Um, unusual question to start with. Um, I'm wearing a 100% fair trade organic uh, certified dress. I'm wearing um, fair trade earrings from Kenya, from a, a fantastic um, artisanal group um, of people with disabilities in Mombasa. Um, and I'm and I'm also wearing a, a vintage secondhand watch. Uh, so yeah, I tend to buy secondhand, but if I'm buying new, I I go to great effort to to buy fair trade and uh, organic. Well, you look absolutely beautiful. And what about you, Asia? I am wearing um, a red dress from a brand that no longer exists, but it is beautiful organic cotton, I believe. On my feet, I have secondhand sandals. I, similar to Safia, tend to try and buy sustainable and ethical brands. If that's not possible, then I do buy secondhand. So you can look absolutely beautiful with sustainable fashion. Now let's watch the video from Annie in New York and take it from there. Hey everyone, my name is Annie Law and I am the founder of a small eco-friendly business in New York City called Line by Moi. Sustainability is important to me because it's very important for us to make proper decisions that will affect the future generations, like stopping the use of single-use plastic and also, you know, stop spending so much money on things that you don't really need and over-consume in general, and also just spread a positive message and to push people to also do the same thing and that's kind of what I've been doing personally I've been thrifting more I've been swapping out single use for reusable stuff and in general just spread a positive message through my brand and to create eco-friendly initiatives for people to follow and like this is something that we can all do and I highly encourage that you do. Aja, let's dive into the conversation now. So what is the real impact of the fast fashion industry on the environment and for millions of workers around the world? So one of the things that people don't think about a lot is that uh, fashion is a uh, feminist issue because the garment industry, I believe, is 80% women. Um, but in the last 20 years, and these are statistics from uh, Fashion Revolution, the number of garments produced annually has doubled. We've since 2000, and it exceeded 100 billion for the first time in 2014. And it estimated 92 million tons of waste is created annually from the fashion industry. So it is a ecological disaster, for lack of a better word. And, and what about also for um, the millions of workers um, throughout this time, especially fast fashion industry time? What does it mean? Yeah. Um, fast fashion has created supply chains of absolute exploitation. There's something that people refer to as the race to the bottom within the industry. And what that means is that uh, a lot of brands don't own their own factories. So they produce through other factories, but they manage to get the price extremely low by competing with these factories and talking them down to the lowest, lowest absolute price, which really, quite frankly, results in starvation wages for most of the workers. Well, let's continue from there with Safia, but first watch the video from Jose, who is a sustainability advisor. 
So what's the impact the fashion industry has in millions of workers' lives around the world? Well, for many years, we've known that the garments that we buy in the high street are made abroad, mostly in developing countries. And although this has helped create millions of much needed jobs to help people pull themselves out of extreme poverty, this has also come with a price. In many of these countries, workers' rights are limited and in many cases, non-existent. We see that workers very often, and if not always, are paid well below a living wage for their work. They work extensive hours, and in many cases, this is done under very poor health and safety conditions. We have seen cases where even child labor has been found in garment factories in many countries. Um, and we've seen also that workers' right to organize and address um, their concerns collectively has been suppressed. So there are a lot of consequences that the fashion industry has um, in, this, um, in these countries where they're sourcing their products. Um, however, we can also recognize that many companies have started to address these issues and have been addressing these issues for quite some time. Um, they've been looking to eradicate these practices in their supply chains. Um, we know that there are several initiatives that are seeking to promote collaboration among brands and companies uh, and to share um, their experiences and to leverage each other to influence suppliers and to influence also authorities. But the challenges are many and they are very complex and will require a greater participation from those in the garment and in the fashion industry. Uh, I think that the biggest problem that we see is the model. The fast fashion model is flawed. It rewards those who are in a race to the bottom, trying to find the quicker and cheaper product so they can offer it for just a few pounds. I think that we as consumers have a great responsibility to make sure the sustainability movement takes ground and really generates the impact that workers deserve in their lives. Um, things that we can do, for example, we can demand our companies and our brands to be more transparent, to share information, to disclose where they're making their products, but also what challenges they're facing. We as consumers also can change the way that we buy. We can look at products in terms of how durable they are, how are they made, who made those products, and what's the impact to that person's lives and to the environment. Now, Safia, you are actually one of the people who initiated that change um, as the founder of People Tree Company. You built your unique supply chain, I believe, to make it sustainable. And it's a model that was um, that is being used by other companies. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. But can you tell us um, what the impact is and how you did that? We, we pioneered the first sustainable um, supply chains. We, we were the first brand to have got global organic textile standards from fields all the way through to ginning, um, spinning, printing the yarns, the manufacture, and then onto the boats and then into our warehouses. Um, we were also the first to have um, fair trade uh, through the supply chain, so certifications by, um, by accredited independent standards. So I think it's always been really a question for me as to, you know, if, if we want as as citizens to be part of the change, part of the solution, then we need to be able to to trust in in, in companies that can supply to basic human rights um, and, and hopefully beyond, you know, that we could support people with living wages, with freedom of association, um, you know, not just, um, you know, being satisfied that maybe they were being paid the minimum wage. I mean, we know that minimum wages you know, aren't adequate to, to generations, future generations escape the poverty gap. You know, it's about power at the end of the day. And so, you know, whilst whilst we can say, you know, with audits, with a bit of transparency and accountability, we can do a little bit better within the fashion industry. That isn't going to get us to net zero carbon. It's not going to get us to a solution that is about looking at this convergence of crises, the, the climate, ecological and social crises. So, you know, we, we really, you know, I was, I was very much looking at how do we create a different way of doing fashion altogether. 
Now, Aja, um, for for many though, in their in their mindset, sustainable ethically made clothing is regarded as expensive as niche style and not for the average shopper. Would you say um, that's really the case? What would you say to those people who think like that? Is it the way we buy really that needs to change? It's definitely the way we buy that needs to change for sure. And to tag on to what Safia said. The secondhand market is a great way to participate in the sustainable fashion movement. Um, it's an idea of wrapping your head around new ideas. We've been so used to things being presented to us and packaged to us in this way where you walk into a store and you can actually like, you know, buy a t-shirt faster than it takes you to brush your teeth, essentially. We need to get away from that. We need to get away from the consumption and we need to get away from the idea that the most sustainable garment isn't the one that you already own. I want to see the fashion industry survive, but I think a lot of the bigger brands haven't been doing right for a long time. And the only way that they're really going to change their ways is if consumers say, we don't want to support this anymore. We're going to start giving our money to smaller brands who are doing things right. And what would you say, um, for example, to me, I want to change my wardrobe and make it sustainable. Where do I start? The first thing I would say is please wear the clothing that's already in your wardrobe. Nothing good can come of all of us buying new clothes. You can't actually buy your way into this movement. You have to wear the clothing that's in your wardrobe because that's a huge part of the problem. So wear the clothing that you that you have. Love it. Wear it well. And make sure not to buy things just because, you know, don't don't go into stores to shop because you're feeling happy or because you're feeling sad or because, you know, you need an ego boost really, really think about what you're buying. If you pick up a garment in a store, think about, are you going to have this garment for five years? And if you aren't, you need to leave it in the store because that sort of idea of really super fast ramped up consumption is by far one of the biggest parts of the problem. And I don't blame consumers for this because I think fast fashion has been packaged and sold to us without many of us even noticing, but it's really time for all of us to slow down. And I think asking brands to change their ways when they're still making a profit is um, not the best way to go about it. Unfortunately, consumers have to speak with their money. Well, just to what you said there, actually, uh, Vani, we have a video from India from Vani and she has a good message. Hello. My name is Vani and I'm from India and I'm a patron of sustainable living and eco fashion. We have already seen the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic on our lives and something more dangerous is coming towards us and it is climate change. I'm trying to cut my carbon footprints because it is a need of the hour. And if we really want to protect our planet, then the next two to three years is all we have. The sustainable fashion movement addresses the whole fashion industry and helps us to control its effect on the society as well as the planet. You can become a part of the sustainable fashion movement by just being a little responsible in your choices. You can increase the lifespan of your clothes, you can go for organic fabrics or you can just go for secondhand shopping. Personally, I have transformed my shopping habits. In fact, I haven't bought anything since I have joined the sustainable fashion movement. Now, buying something is more like an investment to me rather than just shopping. Uh, these small little steps may not create a huge difference in your life, but definitely leaves a great impact on the planet. Now, I really liked what Vani said there, buying is an investment to me rather than shopping. So, um, but looking at how the fast fashion industry is and how it is in our lives, as Azure did say there and everywhere around us, how do we really move away from that and, and make a collective change, Safia? Well, I, I think certainly there are many, many initiatives that are promoting um, sustainable fashion and sustainable living um, from fashion revolution, um, that, that was set up after the, the tragic collapse of the Rana Plaza building, killing more than 1,300 people, um, to, to um, the, the initiatives around um, Extinction Rebellion, for example, with the um, Fashion Act Now, um, which has really got many consumers to, or many people, citizens, to really think about how they choose fashion as a, as a political stance to um, to consume less, but also if they are going to, to buy new, to buy to buy fair trade. Um, but I think be, beyond that, I, I, I think there is a, there's a movement, I think certainly from 
um, Extinction Rebellion and the school strikes last year, a real watershed um, around consumption. And, and COVID, I think, has, has brought that more into, into mind. Um, we launched something called Real Sustainability, which is a, a website that gives information on how to live and lead more sustainably and how to cut your, car, your, your carbon emissions. Um, and I, and we've, we've, we've had a huge number of visitors to, to that website. Um, but I think, you know, whilst, whilst I think citizens, it's right for us to, to hope that, that we can live um, as more conscious citizens, um, you know, that there has been, if you like, a professional class, I think, that's been quite complicit in promoting fast fashion, you know, this kind of splurge or spree. And, and then there are, you know, very, very large um, disadvantaged parts of society that have have really had enormous difficulty in engaging with sustainable fashion when, you know, supermarkets are selling um, fashion for less than the cost of a sandwich. Um, you know, it's really difficult, those mixed messages. So um, whilst I do think um, we can be more responsible as, as citizens, I do think it's also about a regulatory environment. As you said, as Safi, and put it well, very well there, I mean, individual change, we can maybe decrease our carbon footprints, but um, a little bit, but it's a bigger change that needs to happen through policies, maybe. Ajra, so to what degree, though, do you think mainstream brands are using buzzwords such as sustainable as a market, marketing tool when there's really very little behind it? I'm so glad you asked me that question, folks. Don't believe these brands, honestly. The entire system of fast fashion is built on producing the most that they possibly can. And unless a mainstream brand is actually talking about decreasing their production, degrowth, prosperity without growth, then they're not serious about sustainability. Um, I have a quote from the Union of Concerned Researchers in Fashion in regards to sustainability initiatives launched by brands who aren't rethinking their business model. This type of have-it-all consumerism achieved through market forces and satisfying growing consumer yearnings is wholly incompatible with the reality of biophysical planetary limits. And what that essentially says is the volume and scale at which fast fashion is producing, our planet cannot keep up with it. And so for a lot of these brands who have been ramping up their production in the last 20 years, they actually need to talk about slowing down their production. And many aren't. They're just launching sustainable ventures in order to get the general public to believe that they're doing work that they're actually not doing. And so I would invite consumers to be deeply skeptical of a lot of big brands. I believe in small business, and I think that it's much easier to steer a speedboat than a cruise liner. And so I think that the change is really going to come from a lot of the smaller brands, but the brands that are dominating high street space, they have a lot of work to do. And a lot of that looks like rethinking the way they've been doing business for the last 20 years. And that's the change that we really need from these big businesses. And, and Safia, so from there, how did the COVID-19 though impact the fashion industry? Well, it's been a humanitarian crisis. I mean, from, from the, the couple of, of weeks before we knew that uh, things may well go into lockdown, one could sense what would happen um you know large brands pulled their orders they cancelled them they postponed them they negotiated very substantial discounts from factories that might have been making margins of you know less than 10 and 20 percent so you know very often this this meant that factories were not paid they were left with with boxes and boxes of of unsold stock um so you know I mean, absolutely disastrous situation. Um, so not, not only had the garment factory workers no work going forward and, and were then you know, let go of often without their monthly payments, um, those, those factories as enterprises are, are very, very deeply um, damaged by this, this stock having been left with them. So there have been organisations like Clean Clothes Campaign who have promoted the, the pay up, uh, who have exposed many brands um, for their not paying um, for their orders, uh, you know, we, we see a lot of the high street in there. It's absolutely abysmal, shocking behaviour. One one can't imagine that, you know, at this day and age that contracts would be made with factories and just because they're in the global south, it's OK not to, to honour those orders. I mean, you just, just cannot imagine that that would be the case in, in, in business today. It is the case and it's shocking. So you've had um, nearly half of Bangladeshi 
garment factory workers um, laid off. Um, this is this has meant um, starvation. It's meant um, you know enormous hardship um, for for women mostly. Um, you know to to say that they'll go back to the villages is you know it's it's naive because there has been there have been land grabs over the last 20 years there has been a general you know in a, inability to support rural areas and rural economies so there is nothing to go back to and so we really i think when we come back to you know what could that fashion vision be in the future you know we what we need to do is as 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 buyers within the fashion industry as practitioners is to say you know if we're going to buy new product how can we take what we call the, the the FOB price, and how can we make? And we, you know, we we do this at People Tree. We look at the labour cost, we look at the material cost, and we say, okay, this is this is how we're going to ensure that more people can can earn uh, a decent livelihood from making this this particular sweater or this particular um, dress or pair of trousers, and that might be using artisanal craft. Um, techniques like um, hand weaving, hand knitting, even organic cotton uses more labour, you know, but actually is, is much lighter on the planet in terms of water resource and um, um, and, and you know, strengthening the biodiversity of the of the and fertility of the soils. So I think it's it's coming back to really redesigning within, you know, as Kate Roward says, the donut economic approach. How do we you know, how do we manage within the scarce resources of our planet whilst generating as much value addition so that the, as large a number of people can earn livelihoods um, out of creating new clothes? Otherwise, you know, yes, as, as I just says, we have 10 years of clothes on the planet. We don't have to buy anything, you know, for 10 years. The problem is that, you know, if we think about, you know, the whole economy, the economy of a 7.7 .7 billion population where we need to put food on the table for people, we need to think... How can we produce in such a way that that uh, that um, that farmers and um, and and makers uh, can earn a decent living? Let's hope that COVID-19 will be a wake up call for everyone, really. And we have actually a video from someone who loves shopping, shopping. The only problem with sustainable fashion and people like me is it's not compatible. It's not part of my reality right now. I grew up window shopping, seeing people buying the latest sneaker and not being able to emulate that because I wasn't in that financial space growing up makes me even want to go crazier now because I'm lucky enough to have that financial freedom these days. And I'm just not ready, mentally ready to accept people coming to me now and say, listen, you need to slow down. You need to be you know, morally conscious of what you're wearing. I'll get that, I'll get all of that, but I've been waiting my whole life to do these things, especially now if you keep in mind that youth culture is connected to aspirational things and out with the old, in with the new, every time you go on social media, you see your favorite athlete, you see your favorite rapper buying the latest shoe or buying the latest shirt or whatever. It makes you want to go out there and, you know, do it, especially if you weren't able to do that growing up. Now, um, Aja, to you, so um, there are many, of course, who do love shopping and, and who have the freedom to do it and, and, and have the money to buy what they want. So what would you really advise them to be more sustainable? Is there a way for them to be sustainable? I used to be one of those people myself. I didn't grow up with piles of money. And part of the reason I got interested in fashion was because I didn't have the clothing that I felt I needed to fit in and participate. Um, but I have to say, climate change is far bigger than those needs and wants. Like, if you're not mentally prepared to hear these facts, I hope you're mentally prepared for the earth heating up, because I don't want that in the future, and it has to be bigger than trends. But I think, I think there were some real things said there as well. We have to change the culture which pushes consumption. Like, if people are feeling compelled to buy this way, to fit in, to feel good, to feel like they're accepted by their peers, that speaks to something within our culture that we've needed to change for a long amount of time. And I would say that now is the time for that. I don't want for kids to get teased for their clothing anymore because I experienced that and it was crappy. And it made me a very big consumer of fast fashion uh, for a long time. But I had to begin to question the facts that I kind of knew existed and were pushing to the back of my head. It's it's not enough to just go, oh, but I want to participate with it in this way. But I guess to someone like the, the gentleman who just spoke, 
I would say love your clothing and wear it well, you know? You don't have to always be changing, you know, find your style, find something classic that works for you and wear that clothing well. Look at what the fashion designers do, okay? There are fashion designers that wear pretty much the same uniform and they always look good. So look to that, aspire to have style, aspire to, to have your own unique style, which you always feel good in, and then you won't be as um, pushed to consume by the trends. Aja Baba and Sophia Mini, thank you very much for joining us on Tell Me this week. It was a pleasure to talk to you, both of you. And that's it from us this week. So any topic you want to talk about and hear your voice, do write to me to cha-cha-i and stay safe and safe. <laughs>